Welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We have two patterns by Yarnspirations. The apple is exactly the identical whether you have the apple place card holder and I would actually more present that as an apple without the place card if it were me or you have an apple wreath and both of these apples are exactly the same. So today I'm going to show you how to make this apple and in the title of this video is the one that we're going to be concentrating on for project wise. So here is the apple wreath and it's really kind of cool. There's 11 apples that go around. You can see that the way that they're positioned like when you get it one done you can just uh, put it in any position you want and then you just hot glue it down to the ring. The ring here is a flat ring and then they use yarn to kind of wind it around to cover it. Of course you can use a crochet cover if you want to if you're innovative and that's the way you want to go. So in the video in the beginning I showed you the other apple. The instructions that you see down here are exactly identical to the other apple that I showed you. So what we're gonna end up with is this beautiful shape. It's more of a round ball when you're done but when you go to finish it off what you want to do is just put the yarn down through the air and then it makes the top uh, uh, compressed down and then you get the shape of the apple that you see. So you can see that there's different kinds of shapes. It's just how you shaped it. Okay so you can make different kinds of ideas and it's just a matter of being able to shape it. So once you get it done you just hot glue it down and then you just want to make sure that you get all enough to finish the ring in order to do it. So you're gonna need today a three and a half millimeter size. Um, what is that for the particular US measurement? It's a E or size four crochet hook in order to play and then you can use your li Lily Sugar and Cream yarn or you can use Bernat Handicrafter yarn if you'd like to play as well. So let's begin working on the apple together. We're gonna start off in the base of the apple and then we're gonna get bigger and then we're gonna be following along in the instructions. You can see that there's no slip stitching when I did it here. I'm gonna teach you how to do that just in case you would like to do it that way so that you don't see any lines. I'm also gonna show you a technique of avoiding usually when you decrease in these kind of stitches you can see definite lines as you decrease. A friend of mine Kevin and Karen showed me how to do that as well in order to get it so that it looks perfectly even all the way around without any pesky lines of, of decreasing. So we're gonna begin today to do that. You're gonna need a E size uh, a three and a half millimeter crochet hook and some Lily Sugar and Cream and let's begin at the base and just grab a spare piece of yarn because this is my um, stitch marker that I fed up as it went instead of having any kind of slip stitching and I'll show you about that in a second. So get a spare piece of yarn while you're at it. So let's begin. I got my spare piece of yarn off to the side. Let's create a slip knot. This is classified as easy and if you go step by step I can prove that too. So let's put that onto your hook and let's begin. So it says that we need to chain two. So just wrap, uh, wrap the hook and pull through. So one and two and into the very beginning one that you did that I want you to put six single crochet. So just coming back into the second chain from the hook which is the second one in. I want you to put six single crochets into that same one and that forces it to go around a circle. Now when you go to start any project in the beginning it can kind of gets fussy to be able to hold but once you get a little bit more material into your hand it gets a lot easier. So if you're thinking about the wreath and you're kind of struggling right at this stage right now don't uh, let the stage uh, fool you. It's of course it's the hardest part in order to get started. So that was four and it's gonna be nice and tight. This is five and six. So you have a choice. You can either follow the instructions and slip stitch it to the beginning one to form the circle or you can just hold it here and grab your other spare piece of string and come right up underneath it. Okay the stitch. Okay there's the loop. Just come right up underneath and drag a portion of that string through and that will signify to you next time you come around that that's the end. And when we go to start the next round what we're going to do instead of slip stitching we're just going to jump immediately to the next stitch available to you over here in order to continue it and therefore you don't end up with any slip stitching marks. So let's begin. That was round number one. Let's begin round number two. So let's begin round number two and we're gonna show you the way I'm, I'm demonstrating here. So if you're not sure which one is the first stitch when you go to jump over count back six. So just come back underneath. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So this is the sixth one here. So that's the first one that you wanna start with. It's always just the beginning like this that you have to pay attention to that and it's always gonna be nice and tight for you as well. So just to make your life harder. <laughs> so you're gonna put two single crochets into that one plus all of its friends all the way around the other five are each gonna get two single crochets. Now again because I'm starting it um, it gets a little harder just to hold it but once I get more material in my hand it will get faster. So you're gonna place in two single crochets into each stitch going all the way around and when you get to the stitch marker you know that you've gone all the way around and I want you to move up that stitch marker 
uh, in order to keep an eye on where you're ending and, and starting ar around. So let's continue. I'm just going two single crochets at each. I'm getting more material into my hand in order to hold it. I think the years of crochet for me in the long term just uh, I like to holding holding on to bigger projects. Okay so you're coming into each stitch all the way around and right here was the last stitch that I went into. So the very last one I'm going to make that I just did is where I'm going to pull the stitch marker through and that signifies to me of that is the end of that round. So I'm gonna have you do that each time. I'm not gonna point it out each and every time. So that's what I want you to do and let's move up to round number three. So round number three we're going to start just putting one single crochet. So just go into the next one and do one single crochet each and every time each and every stitch around. So you're not doing any really increasing. You don't want to um, expand too early and you don't want to have it getting tightened too quickly either. So it takes its time in getting bigger to form that perfect shape. And just uh, if you're gonna do it just kind of uh, do it so that the front comes out towards you and you're doing one single crochet in each all the way around until the stitch marker and then move it up. So please do that and then we'll move up to the next round together. So I'm back around. I moved up the stitch marker. So in round number four we're gonna do one single crochet in the next one and then the repeat pattern then is then two into the next one. So put two single crochets into the next one. So the repeat pattern for this around round number four is one single crochet in the next one and then put two single crochets in the one after that. And you keep doing that all the way around. So there's one into the next one and then two into the next one after that. Please do that same pattern going all the way around for round number four and move up your stitch marker. So I'm now ready for round number five. So here's the repeat pattern. We're going to do one single crochet in each of the next two stitches and then the next one after that has two single crochets into that stitch. So the repeat pattern for round number five is very simple. It's gonna be two single crochets in a row and then the one after that is gonna have two into the same one. Please do that same pattern and going all the way around for round number five. So let's begin round number six. Round number six and remember I've already just finished number five moved out my stitch marker. So round number six is that the first three will be single crochets and then the one after that will be two into the same one. So the repeat pattern for round number six is two, uh, three single crochets in a row and then two into the one after that. Please do that all the way around. Move up that stitch marker for round number six. So let's move on to round number seven. Round number seven is one single crochet into each all the way around. So there's no thinking. One single crochet into each and move up that stitch marker when you get to the beginning of the round once again. So let's begin round number eight. Round number eight, the first four in a row are single crochets. So one, two, three, and four and then the next one has two. So then for round number eight just remember four in a row and then two. Four in a row then two. Please do that all the way around for round number eight. Okay so let's move on to rounds number nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So there's four rounds in a row exactly identical to each other. Just one single crochet into each and as you pass the stitch marker just include that as a round. So do rounds number nine, ten, eleven, and twelve now and meet me at the end of that and we'll continue along. So just one single crochet into each going all the way around. You're now at the halfway point of your apple. So rounds number 9 through 12 are done and now we're gonna move on to round number 13, lucky 13. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start decreasing as we're now at the halfway point and you're gonna think to yourself it looks like a lemon at this point. That's because you gotta think about this being pushed in a bit in order to get the look of the apple. So if you're seeing it pointed out like that don't worry about it. It will be fixed later and it's just a matter of shaping. So now we're gonna start decreasing and I'm gonna show you a trick in order to prevent you from seeing lines and if you look at my other example you can't see any lines of when I did a decrease. So I'm gonna show you how that's done and this has uh, been a technique shown to me by a friend. So we're gonna do the next four in a row will be uh, one single crochet. So one, two, three, and four. So the next two are gonna be come together. So you technically could just go into the one stitch pull through and go into the next one and pull through and then just pull together. But do you see how it looks a lot different than the other one? It'll it'll form a line. So in order to do to get rid of that what you can just do is that you can just go into the very first one but go into the front loop only. So just going in to the front loop like so. Okay 
and then what I want you to do is just rotate the hook a little bit and pick up the next front loop of the next one. Okay and then pull through both of those. Okay and then pull through two. And what that does is it pulls the two together without forming a line. So we just advance to the next one. So four in a row. So I'll show you again. So one, two, three, and four. This is an amigurumi technique. So we're gonna go into the next one. So we're just gonna go in the front loop only. So we come up from the bottom and then rotate the hook and just go to the next one to front loop only and grab that one. So it looks like you have two in a row and then just pull through and then pull through two. And you keep doing that. I'll show you again. So one, two, three, and four. And this is the last time I'll show you this technique. So coming up, okay, rotate the hook and grab the next one. Sometimes it's a little tight but you can get in there. So just coming up and then going to the next one. So then you got your two on your hook, pull through and then keep on going. So continue that same pattern going all the way around. So it's four in a row and then decrease with the two together. Please do that all the way around. So I've come all the way around, moved up my stitch marker. So round number 14, easy round, one single crochet into each going all the way around. Please do that and I'll see you at the end of this round and move up your stitch marker when you get that far too. We're gonna have your stuffing coming up really soon but uh, we're not quite ready for it yet. So just one single crochet in each all the way around. So let's begin round number 15. So the first three in a row will be one single crochet. So one, two, and three and then the next two are together. So just doing the same technique that I showed you before. I'm just gonna speed up because I've already shown you. So put the next two together and then three in a row. So one, two, and three and then the next two together. So please do that all the way around in the same pattern and I'll see you at the end of this round. So that was the round number 15. Moving on to round number 16. It's just one single crochet into each going all the way around. So one single crochet in each and I'll see you at the end of this round. So round number 17. Round number 17 is the first two in a row, single crochet and then the next two are together. So the same technique, put those two together and then two, two in a row, one and two and then put the next two together. And what I need you to do is grab your stuffing because you're gonna lightly stuff this after you've done this round. So just two in a row and then two together. So before moving on you're gonna have to lightly stuff. So just uh, when it says lightly you can never go backward. It's very hard to put stuffing in after you get it done. So make sure that you wanna get it nice and firm. So when you go to stuff it you don't want it so that the stitches are like pulling apart and looking like it's bleeding of stuffing. So you're just gonna take your polyfill and just continue to fill it up on the inside and you don't want it to impede in any of the stitch work that you want to do. So when you go to do it you just want it to sit in, be in behind so that you're not stitching into the polyfill. It's hard to kind of get those stitches out of your or the polyfill out of the stitches if you're gonna trap it underneath. So you kind of want it out of the way but also firm enough so that you can do it. So you might have to use your fingers in order to push down. So this is just not full enough. Okay see how it's kind of like not bouncing back. So you want to continue to add more until you're satisfied with that. So here is the example of the other one that I did. So you can see it bounces right back and you keep on adding more stuffing to it. So add your stuffing to it and then meet me back here. We'll continue along. We're on round number 17 now and 18 and 19 is just really simple. Just uh, one single crochet into each and actually you know what? What I'll do for you is that you do that after you stuff it. So just uh, put one single crochet into each for rounds number 18 and 19 and then maybe back here and then we'll continue along together. Okay so get your stuffing and do rounds number 18 and 19. I'll see you at the end of that. So rounds number 18 and 19 are done. They were just one single crochet in each and then what I want to do is round number 20 we're going to do single crochet in the first one and then two in the next. So just the first one is just one by itself and then the next one is two together. Okay so one into the next and two together and after this round I need you to stuff the remaining of your apple before you continuing along on to round number 21. So I want you to kind of finish that off and then uh, I'll see you back here in just a moment. So one into the one and then the next two together. Please do that all the way around. So just stuffing this apple before doing 
number round number 21. Now it's easier to pull stuffing out of a out of an apple or any kind of amigurumi after it's been stuffed than it is trying to add more to it. I've done that before where I have done something and as soon as that project really relaxes it's really kind of sloppy looking. So if you ever had to remove stuffing out all you just have to do is just reach in through any stitch work and preferably somewhere that you don't care about and then you can just pu pull it out with your needle or with your crochet hook. So it's just an easier way of doing it but you wanna be somewhat firm but you don't wanna be crazy to the point where you see the any of the stuffing coming out here and with the, the blasting of my studio lights you don't see any um, of that stuffing actually popping out. So now we're at the finishing spot so we're now gonna do round number 21. Round 21 is the final round and all I'm just going to do then is gonna do single crochet two together in each going all the way around. So just um, putting the next two together so using that technique and you keep doing that all the way around for every one of them. So that's together, do the next two together just like that. And so what you're gonna do is once you get all the way back around you're going to take your darning needle and you're just gonna go through the remaining of the stitches and just pull those all together and kind of like a closed line and tie it all together as a pretty bow. Not, not as a bow but you know what I'm saying. Just kind of getting it nice and, and even looking. And then once you do that is you do want to make sure you leave an extra long tail when you go to do that because then you're going to do a little bit of shaping by pulling that yarn through the top and the bottom. So now that I've gone all the way around I'm going to leave this extra long strand here and I want to pull that loop through. And I wanna remove my stitch markers out just like you see. So it kind of really does look like a lemon at this point. So you can see that there's a tiny opening here and that's because we left it open as per the instructions. And using a sharp darning needle, dull with cotton because cotton is so strong it's harder to get through. So you're just gonna go through the remaining of the loops and kind of bring it all together. And I'm gonna go diagonally across and then diagonally the other way. So how you get that shape is right now. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the darning needle through the top and go right down and have it poke out. So just kind of squash it down and poke out the very bottom of it and pull it through. So you can see when you did that, okay, so when you do that when you pull down it's gonna leave an indentation. So then coming back up through the bottom and through the top again and then back down through the bottom. So you get that shape, that classic shape of an apple. So you wanna do it so that it kinda does pull it down a little bit. Okay, just shape it and you'll notice that the apples in the uh, particular wreath and etc. had different shapes and it's all in this particular process. So once you're satisfied with that then all you're just gonna do is take your darning needle and just go through a few of the fibers. So we'll go through one and then go through a different set of fibers for two and go through a different set for three. So you'll see that some polyfill kinda comes out with it. You wanna clean that up afterward as well. So now you can uh, trim that down and we got some stuff to be able to finish through. So you just grab this fibers that kinda popped out but there is the classic shape of your apple. So we still have a stem to add and we also have um, a particular leaf. Now what you can just do is if you push down the other side, see? So it's all depending on which side you push down because you've went back and forth is that you can get a really great shape if you want to. So play with it and this is what it looks like. But we're now going to move on to doing the leaf next which is really quite easy. So we know there's a leaf on this and the leaf is just really quick and easy and we're just gonna create a slip knot to begin. And we're just gonna uh, chain a total of five using the same size hook and you just make the number of leaves that you need for the many apples that you did. If you wanna do two leaves for an apple that's up to you. So you just have a slip knot so you're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four and five. 
So now what we have to do is that we're going to then come down this chain and then back around the other side and come back up the other side of this chain. So we're gonna go kind of in a complete revolution. So second chain from the hook. So just turn it over and get the back loop and count back the second one. And you're going to single crochet. And you're gonna half double crochet in the next chain. So coming into the next one just the same back loop of the next chain. Just half double crochet. And then we're gonna double crochet then in the next one. Just like that. Oops, sorry that wasn't a double crochet. So this is a double crochet. And now what we're going to do is two half double crochets, chain two and then we're gonna slip stitch second chain from the hook. So what we just have to do is that we're gonna do two half double crochets. So this is the very last one. So one and two. And then it says to chain two and it says slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. So just count back one and two and slip stitch. Okay, so this is kind of creating a, a peak. And then what we're gonna go down is that we've seen kind of just turning this around in a circle. So now we're gonna go down the other side of it and on what we're gonna do is that we're gonna do one double crochet in the next one. So right where this double crochet already was is that you're just coming onto the bottom side of it just double crochet. Just like that. And then what we have to do is that one half double crochet in the next one. Just like that. And then what we're going to do is that one single crochet in the last one. And we're going to join this with the slip stitch to the beginning right where you are. Okay, so here is your leaf. So what you wanna do at this point is leave an extra long tail because you're gonna use that for sewing. And trim that out and pull that through the loop. Okay, now this uh, last one or the very starting strand what I would recommend is it getting your darning needle and just gliding it underneath the stitch work in order to hide it. But don't uh, get rid of that other strand that you just finished with. So you're just using the one and using the back side of the leaf just dragging it through your work. How many times? If you said the answer is three you're right. Okay, so three is the magic number for really hiding in your loose ends at the end. And once you have it back and forth three times you can safely cut that right down to the leaf. You'll never see it. So this is what we have. We have our, our leaf and then what we're going to do is apply it to the top when we're ready. So we have one more thing to do. We still have the stem to make and we're just gonna use a darker brown for this one. So it says warm brown in the instructions. So creating a slip knot and you're going to chain a total of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So what we're gonna do then is a second chain from the hook. You're gonna single crochet. So just a second chain from the hook. Just single crochet. And then what you're gonna do is just keep on moving. So one single crochet in the next chain. Just like that. And then it says to slip stitch ourselves into each of the next four chains. So what this does is it gives the top of the apple a, a bigger look at the top of the stem than it does in the, bo the bottom of the stem. So you just single, or you're just slip stitching the final four that you have. And once you get that done you're just gonna, that's it. So the string that I'm using right now is going to be the string that sews it to the top of the apple. So leave it a little bit extra long for yourself and get rid of get rid of the extra string uh, in order to do that uh, the other one that you have here and then uh, we're gonna use that to sew and I'll be right back. I dropped my scissors I'll be right back. So with your little stem done and your little leaf we're ready to go for the attaching process. So let's put on the stem first and using the extra long strand that you finished with is that you're going to apply it to the top of your apple. So right where the indentation is at this point you can just pop it out if you want to just put force it out you can shape it later and you're just gonna go into some fibers. Don't go too crazy about it and just kind of pull it in. And then what you wanna do is go through the project. So I mean like go through the stem itself and then back down through the project of the apple. 
and you wanna go a few times with that depending on what your application is too of course um, on how sturdy you need to make that in order to get it to work. So you wanna kinda get it so that it's not leaning down on its side so you, the way that you sew it and the way that you can force it is all just a technique idea if you would like to, to go for that concept. So once you think you're satisfied with that then all you can just do is then just go back and forth in and out of the stem a total of three times. So one different section, two I don't wanna go into that red so I don't have it bleed this color so then three. So then I can just trim that out. Then I want to add my leaf. So the leaf is usually right at the just an, an ornamental reasons it's right at the base. So we're just gonna apply the darning needle to it and then just go into the base section. You can go into a little bit of the side of the stem if you want to as well. Your goal is just to make it look like it belongs together. Now cotton is a very strong yarn. Okay, so there we go. And I wanna sew it so it's kinda staying together with the stem without actually having it bleed into the stem. Mother Nature is really quite awesome on how things are meant to belong together. So you don't have to go too crazy with securing that but again in and out of the leaf three times in order to get it to stick. So that was one. This is two and three coming up. And then of course you can shape it and cut that right down into the project. And then what you can just do, push it down and reshape it. So make the top sink down just a little bit and reshape and there is your cute little apple. So you got the indentation at the bottom, you have the indentation at the top, you got a leaf attached to your stem and then you're good to go. So you can take your apples and uh, really do a great job with this. Whether you're doing a wreath or just presenting it to a teacher that you really care about or even making it as a placeholder. So this is how you do your apple and until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.